Before I put all this away, I have one more processor that I wanted to test, and that is the Turion 64 chip. And that does work on this motherboard. Now, I had to update the BIOS on this to make that work. The original BIOS that was on this motherboard, it would just freeze it post. It actually would detect it as an Athlon 64 6200 plus, which was kind of interesting. But now it detects it properly as a Turion 64, and it actually uh, boots up now. So let me take a look at this processor. It also, this chip uh, is multiplier unlocked like the other mobile 64, Athlon 64 chip. Um, this chip actually can run clear down to one volt, which is interesting, a little bit lower than the other chip. Uh, it also has one megabyte of level 2 cache, just like the claw hammer. So this should be a good uh, comparison. I'm going to be looking at the uh, 2600 pre-release chip, the 2800, just the same benchmarks we did on the last video, and then we're going to put this into that list and see where it falls with those processors. So just to recap here, this is the Foxconn WinFast 755 motherboard, which is running the 755 Sys chipset. Uh, 9800 XT video card again, and all the same stuff as the last video when I did the test on the pre-release processor. This Turion 64 uh, was not functioning correctly until I updated the BIOS on this board. It wouldn't go past the post screen. Uh, and once I updated the BIOS, it's all good to go. In the BIOS, I still did not have the ability to change the multiplier settings. So I again had to result to using the software. And again, it locked up whenever it felt like it, changing the multiplier on the fly. So yeah, it kind of sucks. The nice thing about these mobile chips is the ability to change the multiplier because they are multiplier unlocked. The interesting thing I did find though here is that this utility does not allow me to overvolt the processor. Setting the voltage above 1.35 volts in this case, uh, it just doesn't actually do anything. You can select it, but it doesn't actually do that. So uh, anyway, that's fine. I'm not doing any extreme overclocking on this processor, but it does limit the ability to do so. A more proper motherboard that's actually designed for overclocking would definitely fix this problem. So this chip's being compared to the 2800 pre-release chip as well as the 3400 mobile Athlon which I've underclocked to the 2800. I'm um, just comparing it to the benchmark results from the last video. And first you can take a look at 3 Mark 2000 here. And you can see that the Turion 64, even though it's the same speed as the Clawhammer pre-release chip, uh, it is still falling behind the pre-release processor, even though this is a newer revision. And these Turion chips do have one megabyte of level 2 cache, so that's the same. But you can see it's clearly falling behind a little bit there. Again, we see the same thing with 3D Mark 2001. 3D Mark 03, you can see it's actually ahead this time. It's actually basically identical to the 2800. 3D Mark 05, again, it's actually right basically identical to the 2800. And again, the 3D Mark 2006 are all pretty much the same, but it is falling behind the 2800, just a smidgen here. It's more in line with the 2600, which would be right. I mean, it's running at the same clock speed, so it should equal that chip, but not always here. Aquamark, all three processors are basically doing the same here with one frame per second separating these processors from the 2800. Quake 3. It's again doing the identical frame rate as the pre-release 2800 did. Doom 3, they're all scoring 39. Unreal Tournament. 
UT bench. 44, 48, 44 for the minimum. 156, 199, 115 for the highest. It's interesting that, again, the Turion is behind, at least in the max. And then we take a look and see what the average is. And it is behind all of them in the average just a little bit, which is interesting, again, because it's the same speed as the claw hammer and it's a newer revision. So you'd think it'd be at least equal to the pre-release processor, but it's not. Final Fantasy benchmark here. It's actually falling in between the 2800 pre-release and the 2800 running at 1.8 gigahertz here. And finally, taking a look here at Halo here, it's basically falling in line with the pre-release processor, although it's one frame per second below that. I kind of went into this thinking that the Turion chip was going to fall in between these two processors, the pre-release 2800 and the true 2800. It would fall somewhere in between there, and I suppose it kind of did, but the fact that this thing actually is beaten by the pre-release processor in a few tests is kind of interesting. You can see from the 3D Mark 03 and 05 and 06 scores that the newer the benchmark is, the better this processor does. So there's probably some optimizations being that have been done in this processor. The uh, SSC instructions, 3D Now, 64, something like that. There's some optimizations that were done possibly for the software that was around at that time when this Turion 64 was released. Um, and that would make sense get as much uh, benefit out of this processor as you can for the software that was relevant at that time. Remember this processor wasn't really intended to be running on a desktop platform, it was intended to be in a laptop. But as you can see these processors are pretty good chips. I don't really have any issue uh, as far as being able to cool it, stability, um, motherboard chipset does seem to be a factor. The SIS seems to work with these mobile chips just fine. So that's something to keep in mind. But the, unfortunately, the SIS chipset, it's kind of hard to find a good motherboard that will allow for overclocking with it because the SIS chipset is considered a low-end budget chipset, even though it performs really well. It's a really good chipset, stable. And this motherboard, this WinFast board, um, it looks like it was built pretty well. We've got Rubicon Z capacitors on this thing. None of them are bulged or anything like that, which they shouldn't be. Um, this is a really well-designed, seems like a well-engineered board. And it's kind of sad it doesn't have more capabilities with it. The one thing I forgot to point out at the beginning of this video was that the, uh, the BIOS here, I noticed with this processor, uh, when I go to look at the speed of the memory here, I can actually overclock this RAM up to 250 megahertz, and I couldn't do that with that uh, mobile chip. I didn't really look at the other one, but all, the option I only had at that time was for up to 200 megahertz. And I haven't changed the RAM or anything. It's the same RAM, but um, it's interesting that with this Turion 64, I'm getting more um, speed, RAM speed selections out of it. So it's kind of interesting. This allows me to basically clock the RAM independent of the bus speed beyond what the bus speed is actually running at. It's kind of interesting. I didn't try it, but I don't think it would really be any kind of a benefit. Um, but anyway, this is kind of an interesting test just to see how the uh, Turion 64 competes with the the mobile and the, well in this case, the pre-release processor. But um, it's in line with where it should be, I guess. I don't know. But it looks like, it's like I said before, it looks like it was optimized for some newer software, at least, of that era. And, uh, well, that's interesting to see anyway. So, take care, everyone. Peace out, and we'll see you again right here on the Wayback Tech Channel.